all want a system, a regulatory system that keeps New Zealanders safe and trusted. Engineers agree on this with the public and the government. There's no problem with the understanding that that's what we want. This means engineers working within their competence, having high professional standards and being held to account when necessary. And it also means having confidence that engineers can undertake specific safety critical work. So if we all agree on that, what's the problem that MB is trying to solve through this reform? Why are we here having this conversation? Well, we're here because the government and the public don't have the confidence in the current system. Because of failures like CTV building and the Southland Stadium, and what we're here to discuss is whether the government solution is the right one. Six years ago, after Christchurch, the Canterbury Earthquake Royal Commission recognised this, and they recommended changes to the way engineers are regulated. That's a long time ago. And we've had a lot of discussion since about the best way to do that. We've talked to lots of you. We've had discussions with many other stakeholders. and and there have been many options generated over the years. We've also spoken to MB about it at some length. And now we've got to the point where government is proposing a new regulatory framework, and that's what we're focusing on. So at a high level, what we think is really important is that a regulatory system needs to call to, to satisfy three core principles to be effective. When we get um, and do our submissions, we'll be testing our submissions against th these three core principles. First, it needs to be simple to understand and simple to work in, as well as effective. Secondly, it should pitch the government's oversight at the right level of regulation, letting the profession take the appropriate amount of responsibility as well. And thirdly, any new system should have the ability to extend beyond building and construction to cover other safety critical in areas of engineering, like amusement devices and water, for example. Which brings us here today. So MB released its proposal for regulating the profession on the 16th of April. They did this in the context of other building system reform, which we're also going to submit on, but we're not talking about that today. Um, and as we provide feedback on this proposal, we want to make sure it fits with the regulatory big picture. How many of you had the chance so far to read MB's discussion document? Well, that's fantastic. That's quite a lot of you. So you already have a lot of questions about it. If you haven't, we're going to summarise its key points shortly. So when we respond, our goal is to move the discussion in a helpful direction. Uh, we have influenced the model significantly as it's been developed, and we do support much of its high-level thinking, but not everything. We also know there are lots of unanswered questions, and some of these are quite detailed. But we're going to have to be really smart about how we respond to think about the best way to influence an outcome that works for both the public and the profession, both now and into the future. Our only tool is influence. And to use that to greatest effect, we're going to have to think individually and collectively about how the few really strong messages uh, about what the, re the few really strong messages we can all galvanise around, even if some of us have different areas of focus around some of the detail. So when you think about your response and what you're going to do individually and with your groups and your networks, um, think on the influencing tools you have at your disposal. So let's have a look at the current system. While we have got used to it and we're reasonably comfortable in it, 
it had several flaws. And if we were starting from a blank page, it's not what we what we create. At the moment, there is absolutely no mandatory professional regulation of engineers carrying out safety critical work in New Zealand, which you know well. And as a result, what people are trying to do is make CPENG fulfill a function it wasn't designed for. CPENG is a voluntary quality mark that conveys general competence rather than proven ability to perform specific work. But some of its requirements, CPENG's requirements, like ongoing reassessment, are more aligned to with what you would expect from a licensing regime, where you have to meet extra criteria to do certain types of work. And this creates confusion about its role, as is the fact that it sits in a statutory context. We also know that CPENG doesn't stop engineers operating outside their areas of competence, nor does it provide enough assurance that an engineer can do specific safety critical work, which in turn has led to councils and others uh, doing workarounds. For example, creating lists of approved engineers, which adds even more confusion. When we at Engineering New Zealand have engaged with members about um, what you want from regulation, mostly we've heard that the ideal regulatory model for engineering professionals is a mix of government oversight and professional self-regulation. So that means government oversight with stakes are really high at the licensing regime level restricting access to those who can perform safety critical engineering tasks. It also means really strong self-regulation from the profession in terms of a credible internationally benchmark, general quality mark of technical competence and professionalism. In other countries, a general quality mark like CPENG is typically taken care of through self-regulation by a professional body not through government regulation. Chartered membership, which we introduced in 2017, was specifically designed to complement a licensing regime. We expected this was coming. And our chartered member is a credible, internationally benchmarked, general quality mark that establishes a base of professionalism and technical competence. It already represents robust self-regulation. Our chartered members can be held to account. They have to uphold, you have to uphold ethical standards and do continuing CPD. We always intended to rename this membership class Chartered Engineer in line with other professional in engineering bodies internationally once the expected new licensing regime came into play. Other current chartered member categories would also be renamed in that, at that time. For example, chartered engineering geologist, chartered engineering technologist, and chartered engineering technician. Our thinking was, and still is, <laughs> excuse me, that chartered engineer would be the base and the licensing regime would be on top of that. So you could, for example, be a chartered engineer with a license to perform safety critical structural work or a license in other safety critical work. A licensing system aligned to the chartered engineer class and level would provide a robust, easy to understand and credible system of regulation for the profession and for the public. So that's our vision and that's what we've been working towards. Now let's look at what MB's proposing. First, licensing for safety critical work as we all expected and wanted and we really support this. It's the absolute right place in our view for government oversight. More work, a lot more work is needed to develop the threshold and the scope of the licenses um, and the discussion document is really light on that detail. And we've got no question that any licensing regime needs to access to the best technical expertise to set standards and assess them in each area. 
And as I've also said, it's really important that any scheme can be extended into other safety critical works over time, engineering work. In addition to licensing, the government has also proposed a voluntary statutory certification scheme to provide assurance of an engineer's professionalism and general competence. This model would mean two schemes for recognising an engineer's general competence. Government oversight through the certification scheme and self-regulation through chartered membership of Engineering New Zealand. The MB document, Physician Certification as Replacing CPENG, but we think that that really confuses the situation because in other countries, a general quality mark like CPENG or Chartered Engineer belongs to the profession. It's taken care of typically through self-regulation by the professional body, not through government regulation. And we think replacing CPENG with licensing is a much better way to align government regulation with risk. Part of MB's justification for certification is that it would accommodate areas of engineering outside of the building and construction sector where the CPENG register is called up under other regulations. Um, these include such things as the certification of amusement devices or heavy vehicles and design ver verification of cranes, pressure equipment and passenger ropeways. And in our view, these areas of safety critical engineering work should be covered by a licensing scheme, not a general technical competence scheme and general certification. We also think statutory certification of general competence is unnecessary. It duplicates the chartered member class, which is already a quality mark of professional recognition and technical competence that's internationally benchmarked. When you look at the big picture, certification creates an even more confusing system and it's not actually clear what problem MB is trying to solve with that part of its reform. We understand it's un intended to underpin licensing by certifying general competence and professionalism, but Chartered Member does that. And if certification is a prerequisite for licensing, it would add another layer of cost and regulation. The discussion document also talks about certification as a way of addressing the issues that have, for example, led to the council lists. But these aren't going to be fixed with the certification scheme. That was the idea behind CPENG, and it hasn't worked. So how would this look in practice? <coughs> Let's say, Chris, is a structural engineer who works mainly on low-rise residential designs. So currently, he's a chartered member with CPENG. In our future ideal model, Chris would be a chartered engineer. Have we got a slide for him? Ah, yes. And under MB's proposed model, Chris would be a chartered engineer and a certified engineer. Then let's now look at Emily. Oh, thank you. Emily is currently a chartered member with CPENG. In our future ideal model, Emily would be a chartered engineer and hold a license for safety critical fire design. Under MB's proposed model, Emily would be a chartered engineer and a certified engineer, and hold a license for safety critical fire design. Which is quite confusing. <laughs> Other aspects of MB's proposal uh, we really strongly support around the licensing regime component. We do support greater and stronger accountability mechanisms in the licensing realm. We support a robust, fair, impartial, transparent and proportional complaints and disciplinary process that appropriately, effectively manages risk to the public. 
for safety critical engineering. We've done as much as we can in our reforms in Engineering New Zealand to make our system robust, transparent and fair, but we have some parameters and constraints through CPENG. We also support strong governance and leadership. And we agree with the government that licensing should be independently governed in the same way that many other professional regulatory schemes are. Uh, we also think that um, the skills and experience of Engineering New Zealand as a current administrator uh, under CPENG should, should be used to lead and operate the licensing regime. So what does this mean for CPENG? Under MB's proposal, CPENG would be repealed, but it wouldn't happen straight away. Any transition to a new regime would take time, potentially years. Uh, some people are asking why CPENG can't be modified to achieve what MB's aiming for, why we even need to introduce licensing, and uh, there are a number of reasons for this three for starters. In fact, I've got four now. Um, first of all, so much change is needed that it's simple, simpler to start again. Secondly, CPENG just isn't robust enough or specific enough. It is too general. Thirdly, refocusing CPENG as a licensing scheme doesn't think about the whole regulatory system for engineers. It would only be relevant or accessible to those um, engineers that have CPENG, and it cuts across our vision of a chartered engineer quality mark that all members of the profession can aspire to, and which we think strengthens the profession as a whole and raises the bar. And fourthly, problems with the current CPENG regime are problems that we have to resolve that can't be fixed. And so problems with the general competence quality mark that can't be fixed by changing its name through a certification scheme. So um, in some ways, this is an absolutely classic debate against government, you know, between government and self-regulation. Where's the appropriate line for that to sit? Uh, at the moment, engineers are right on the self-regulation spectrum, even though there is a confusing statutory component through CPENG. Under this proposal, government will play a much more dominant role. We think that's right for licensing, but not for general competence, general technical competence and professionalism. We think the profession must take responsibility for setting the general competence credible standards and government to pitch in where there's a significant risk of harm. Interestingly, this is, signif this is consistent with the government's own expectations generally, not even these expectations, the government's own expectations. Uh, that's set out in a cabinet circular on occupational regulation. They talk about government regulation only pitching in where appropriate and where possible leaving the professions to self-regulate. Anything else creates cost, confusion and duplication, which undermines the effectiveness of the regulatory system as a whole. We think it ought to be simple, straightforward for the public to understand and the profession to work in. At the moment, having two quality, voluntary quality marks, one statutory through CPENG and the other through chartered membership, uh, is already confusing for the public. And we think a three-layer scheme that has a statutory quality mark, a membership quality mark, and a licensing component is even more confusing. And that can't be effective. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, what we're really keen to hear now is what you think, your reaction to it, what's your take on the big picture, what, we, what should we be aiming for, and how can we best influence this proposal into something that works well for engineers and gives confidence to the public. I'm going to hand you back to 